Okay, hi and welcome to another event with Dublin Coding School. This time it's a lunchtime broadcast and we're going to be looking at automation testing and also um, a look at the automation testing tool uh, Cypress, which I believe uses JavaScript, but more on that later with our lecturer. And just before I introduce um, our host for today, this lunchtime, uh, maybe just a bit about Dublin Coding School. So we're a, a school for adults who are looking to change their careers. Uh, we're based here in Dublin. Uh, we offer short courses um, in things like data analytics, web development, UX design, um, and also automation testing, which we're going to be looking at today. Uh, this course, by the way, I'll just look at my notes. So we're, this one goes, is, the next course is going to be starting on June the 28th. Uh, the cost is 1390 in euro. Um, as part of that, you also get to uh, take part in our career centre. So all of our graduates on our courses get auto enrolled into what we call the career centre, where a guidance counsellor will help you with your sort of career plan, help you with your CV, also with your online presence in places like LinkedIn and GitHub, if you have technical things to uh, demonstrate. Uh, we also help you with interviews. So if you get an interview either through us or yourself, we'll have a Zoom call with you the day before and look at the company you're interviewing with and anticipate questions and come up with your career story and give you questions to ask them. So instead of being nervous about interviews, you, you start to view them like a competitive sport. Um, uh, we also, by the way, when you book onto any of our courses, you get what we call a second chance. So you can sit the course twice within 12 months, absolutely free. And that's really if you wanted to refresh your knowledge, maybe you wanted to build your portfolio again, or just refresh really, because we realize these are technical subjects. You know, most of the people doing them are beginners. So we realize sometimes you want maybe that, that safety net of being able to go over the material again. So I think we're the only coding school that offers that. We, you can sit our courses twice really for the price of one, it's built into the offer. Um, okay, so look, maybe a, a bit more about on us at the end and how to contact us, uh, but I'd like to introduce um, the lecturer for today, uh, Palash, who is um, a senior automation engineer at the major US uh, uh, fashion company, Rent the Runway. And I don't know if any of you have been looking at the news today, Gwyneth Paltrow, the, uh, the Hollywood actress has just joined the board of Rent the Runway. So, so it sounds like there's some interesting things happening there. Hi, Palash, how are you doing? Hi, hi, Luke, I'm good. How are you? Great, thank you. M maybe uh, good to start if you just tell uh, the viewers a little bit about your background and, and how you got into automation testing. Yeah, so um, basically I have almost five, six years of experience in uh, automation and uh, it's almost uh, actually quality engineering overall, uh, which includes uh, getting the good quality of the products. So, and automation is something which I like because uh, it has uh, helped test and increase the quality of the product and uh, always uh, software should be bug free. Uh, and that's what automation is aimed at. So uh, I kind of like the detective work that we do. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's that's why I have been in here for six and maybe looking for more. <laughs> okay, yeah, it can be like detective work I hear uh, on the testing side. So you're testing websites, digital assets for bugs and trying to find out where, where, where the faults are. Um, just before you start now, I'd just like to say to everyone watching, if you have any questions, do type them into the bottom of the feed at Facebook, and we will get to every question that's been asked at the end. So it doesn't matter what the question is, if, if, if there's something you want to know, just ask us, whether it's about the school or the content um, we're talking about. Um, so with that, I'll now pass over to Palash to begin the, uh, the, the uh, introductory lesson. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so thanks for the introduction, Luke, and now we'll begin with the presentation. So here we are, uh, here we are assembled to, uh, let, let me share my screen first and then we can begin. Okay, so this is... Uh, so we have been here assembled to talk about um, the art of software testing, um, how automation testing is uh, done, and what are the tools exactly Cypress, how it does it, and all this, all the things. So uh, to begin with, uh, this is the course outline. Um, we'll look at uh, what are the daily daily jobs of tester, what is the difference between the automation and manual testing, and different types of tools that could be used as well. So. Uh, what is software testing? If you look at the terms separately, uh, software is something which is written uh, in a program and is used by a computer. That 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 is a software. Testing is quite a general term, as in uh, when 
for 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 a software tester it is different for an electrical person who is uh, what testing is testing is actually something is the bulb is bulb fixed properly or not uh, for a for a person who is into healthcare uh, is the machine or uh, or the temperature that is seen and the monitor is it's correct or not all these are different scenarios of uh, testing for in the similar way software testing is something um, which you provide the software to the customer which is defect and bug free it should not have any faults uh, this is done to prevent damage uh, as you see increase cost efficiency and reduce life risk for example if you find any um, any any bug in the software or in the software of airplane then it might be a uh, life risk for someone who is at the dentist and the machine is not working properly it could cause damage to the person so uh, all this thing uh, that's why software testing is necessary and it needs uh, the product to be bug free right so wait just to stop there so that's really interesting isn't it so it's really highlighting how how important software testing is because what you're saying is you know machines in in hospitals sometimes run on, uh, on computer systems and yeah. and banks and all of that booking systems on airplanes so if they haven't been properly tested when they've been created there could be a real issue i know we've right. had this hack haven't we on the health service where they've been able to get into the system so you see how important it is to make sure everything is bug free true true uh that's really right and uh, to go to the next uh, slide here uh what are actually the daily job responsibilities of a tester uh making sure the application that you are giving to a customer is functionally working correctly suppose if you are clicking a submit button it should submit the details it should not go and transfer something anywhere else making sure the functional application functionality is proper um then there is second option in which you find the bugs and uh, try to solve them with developers as in uh, if there is a bug in the application you uh, notify them to the one those who have created the application they solve it you test it again and then it should be live this is this is what daily responsibilities of testers in any company is uh, uh, just just for fun like troubling uh, software developers something very common uh, in a tester uh, then overall like the major goal is to have a good quality product at the end when you release it to a customer he should not be frustrated with what product you're releasing with um, if there there should be there should be 90% less defects like uh, there there are few defects which cannot be stopped and which are only uh, found when uh, the system is in production but uh, we have different um, methods for that but uh, to be honest it should be just a good quality product when you go live Okay. okay, so you're you're interacting a lot then with the software developers, is that right? Yes, you have to daily. As in, whenever you find a bug, you notify it to them, and they clean it again, and then again you test it to make sure that it is functionally correct. So that's how you, the interaction is quite um, honest, like daily wise, if you say it's it's like that. Yeah. Okay. So you're almost you're very much on the same team there, aren't you? You're almost like a football team where they're trying to score goals, you're playing in defense. You are the goalkeeper, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because the testing is done at the end, uh, when generally at the end when the production is about to go, and there is a UAT as well done before production. So uh, it's like, yeah, you are in the middle between the customer and the developer. So you are yeah. interacting to both of them. It's, so it's if, quite if, customers, if customers on websites or in computer games or wherever start finding mistakes, that means it hasn't been tested properly. Exactly, and yes. it could lead to a cost effect. Like it could lead to someone who might lo you might lose a customer because of it because he might not find your product interesting anymore. So that's like quite a responsibility. Yeah, especially on a on a I mean a website like Rent the Run Runway where it's so busy. I mean it's a big international company, so it's quite dynamic. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So going to the next slide. Okay, the there could be many types of testing uh yeah. that has really 17 or 18 uh, if you want a number but a mo major is uh functional non-functional automation all these kind of testing so here we are looking at the difference between the manual and automation yeah As now, just to say i know this questions come come comes up a lot from people who contact the school what's the mm -hmm. difference between manual testing and automation testing so it's great we can have a look now yeah uh so uh manual testing is something uh where you go in and check a website and see okay there is a defect in this, in the automation testing same thing is done with the tools with the help of tools is selenium is cypress there might there might be plenty of tools but uh, 
If it is automated, then it's called an automation testing. It's the similar kind of test case, but it's done by a program. Manual testing is sometimes time consuming, as in suppose there are 100 or 200 users, which you have to verify if they are able to log in into a system or not. Then uh, for this time saving, you can use the tools. You can just put a for loop and then uh, go ahead and just log in one by one, one by one. It, it, the tool will do it for you. And hence you save the time. The time which would take almost two to three hours could be done in two to three minutes. That's, that's a bit of time saving there. Next is uh, sometimes manual intervention is required in some scenarios. For example, if you have, if you are doing something, a banking transaction and there is an OTP for a transfer, you have to manually enter the OTP in the system. You cannot, you cannot get a tool to get the fetch the OTP from your phone and then enter it to your, into your software. That is quite a difficult scenario. For that, the manual testing is required. Uh, that's why in testing world, we say that 70 and 30%, like 30% of scenarios are to be manual, could be manual and require manual intervention. Whereas 100% uh, of automation is a myth because there are a few scenarios. Although it does have uh, complex scenarios wherein you create a different product, uh, create a different window, and uh, from there you pull in all the details. These, these things can be automated, but not 100%. Okay, uh, the next point in manual testing is generating manual reports. Uh, whenever you do it with hand, you don't have any software in the back end that writes, okay, it is passed or failed. You have to do it manually. And you do it generally on an Excel sheet. Uh, you maintain an Excel sheet where you have all the scenarios and you once you see it as passed or it is working properly, you mark it as passed, then you mark it as failed, all these kind of things. Whereas automation tool, it generates an automated report. It it, it helps you like uh, it, it will, uh, once it is passed, it will automatically give you a PDF or Excel or whatever a dashboard and, the, and, the, and, and some tools, uh, which would which would create an automated report for you if you run the scenarios. Uh, end goal for both of the testing is similar. Like uh, we already discussed that maintaining the quality of the product. Whereas uh, in automation testing, the, the, it adds another goal as well, like reducing the manual efforts. It is helping testers to uh, do the like uh, the tied some scenarios like very very um, complex scenarios easily uh, with the help of tool and can be run anytime. Uh, all the all these things. So yeah, uh, that's the difference uh, we can plot out between manual and automation testing. Okay, and it's automation testing as well. You can <clears throat> test much larger. Um, maybe that's not yeah. quite the word, but you can. Uh, bigger suite of tests could be tested. Test, as I said, yes. uh, it's time saving. Um, yeah. If you have almost 200 scenarios, which might need five hours of testing in manual when you do it manually, whereas an automation it will only take five minutes. So yeah, that's yes, why yes, exactly. so it saves time and effort and gets more testing done in less time. True. True. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, going to a specific automation testing tool, which is Cypress. Uh, Cypress is something which has recently uh, got famous since 2018. It has been marked as one of the best automation tool. Uh, different features are there in Cypress as in you can directly automate the UI. Uh, even Selenium does that, but in a very simpler way, Cypress handles it very easily. Uh, live code writing and executing, as in you write the test cases, and in the similar, on the right-hand side, you could see all the execution of the test cases going on. That's the beauty of Cypress. It, it is very easy uh, to write and automate those test cases. Uh, easy framework structure in Selenium or any other tool that you use, you will have to uh, manually create your framework, as in uh, all the packages, all the Java classes, and everything. Whereas Cypress gives you a bit of um, uh, hand with that and already create a framework uh, structure wherein you can put everything uh, as you wish. So yeah, uh, another thing is uh, it generates screenshot and videos with just a plugin. Uh, so it's quite easy to do that in Cypress, whereas other frameworks, it's a bit uh, complex to do things. Whereas videos is something very new. Uh, you can actually check where your test has failed, what your test case was executing. So yeah, that's that's something Cypress provides as well. Uh, it can automate pop-ups and other complex scenarios, uh, which are hard to automate in other frameworks. So that's that's the overall. Uh, if we if we go into more details of this Cypress when uh, in our course, so yeah, it's it's quite a detailed one. 
Now, uh, going to again that they, as I explained, these are the features of Cy Cyprus. As in time travel, time travel is something uh, wherein you execute the scenario, and you have all the steps in front of you where you can see what was the screenshot before and after, uh, after the click, uh, what happened before, um, uh, just uh, doing things. Okay, so, so very, it's 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 not actual time travel. The technology isn't that advanced. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it just it just saves your screenshots and videos just to compare and actually highlights what uh, selects you have clicked. So it is it is quite a unique feature. Uh, and and being an automation yeah. tester, I know it's very helpful. So uh, next is automatic waiting, waiting which uh, says that in Selenium, uh, generally, or any other framework that we compare with, we have to implicitly or explicitly declare uh, waiting times. Whereas Cypress is quite intelligent, it automatically waits for the last step to finish um, and the object to get appeared and then click on it. You don't have to uh, continuously mention waits and do stuff. There are some scenarios wherein you will have to, but uh, Cypress methods are designed in such a way that it automatically waits for it. Third is the debuggability, as in, as I said, you can do time travel. Uh, it's quite easy to see what element you have clicked, when you have clicked, what are the select, what was the uh, same time, what were the variables, values, and exact, right? all, all the things. So it's quite easy in Cypress. They have made it this way. Uh, next is the consistent result, wherein if you if you run a Cypress suit of tests, it will give the similar test. They are hardly very flaky. Uh, flaky is a term that is used to uh, just say that, okay, this test is not, uh, this might give in consistent results, whereas Cypress tests are mostly uh, giving consistent, I would say 98, 95%. Uh, screenshot and videos I already explained uh, that they provide with just a plugin and you can do you can you can do whatever you can see actually executing the test cases in front of you uh, then again real-time reloads is something which you could just press a reload and it will run all the test cases you don't have to go and hit a command it's just in the Cypress UI wherein you can just reload and okay uh, all the test cases are running again so these features are quite good um, uh, quite uh, which helps automation testers to uh, help develop the test cases and figure out the bugs easy yeah. so going to the next slide uh, this shows how complex before cypress world was and with cypress what you get so there there are different frameworks which need a little bit of libraries a little bit of new features to be designed framework structure is quite complex whereas in with cypress you'll see it is very easy very easy to handle very easy to write automation test cases and you can focus on the bugs or whatever things you might see in your application that that is very helpful so that's all about cypress um, any question and answers please Okay, thank you very much. That was great. Um, so just go to take some questions now. So we had one here from a, um, this come in by Sinead, who was asking, do you need to be good at mathematics to be a, a tester? Or, or is it okay if, you, if, if you're not a maths genius? <laughs> <laughs> no, mathematics is something I would say, uh, not very connected to testing. But yeah, sometimes just to, uh, you don't have to be a genius <laughs> to, to be honest just basic maths for a testing is quite okay yeah you surely don't have to be a genius for that okay very good i know that's a question that seems to be asked quite a lot <laughs> here from fergus who is um, asking is it possible to learn uh, to be an automation tester as a beginner so do, you know without any prior knowledge of technology or it yeah sure uh, it is quite possible um, as i said cyprus made it quite easy for someone who is very new at testing to be uh, someone who can actually write automation test cases fix on the box and with, with proper uh, with proper guidance to be honest and, and it, it is very easy so yeah now um, someone who has very less knowledge of testing yes you can be an automation tester with the help of Cypress and other tools so okay I mean another one here um uh, from John asking you said you mentioned JavaScript. So do you need to know JavaScript? Would you need to learn that at the same time of, of if you were learning this? Yes, basic JavaScript knowledge is a little bit required. Now we have another course for that as well in our Dublin coding school. So uh, basic knowledge for Java uh, JavaScript is required to have uh, uh, to do Cypress testing and automation yeah. testing. 
yeah. as Cypress is based on JavaScript. So yeah, you need a little bit of knowledge there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you said that. So that would all be included in the course, by the way. Uh, in the automation testing course, we look at various areas. And one of the areas we're looking at putting in now is Cypress because it's becoming so prevalent. But also you would get a, a, a le lectures on JavaScript. So you, you don't need any prior knowledge to go into any of our courses. They're all designed for absolute beginners um, to come on and, and learn from. So I'll just check if there are any other questions. So that was those three came in. I actually have a question myself. Uh, so what, what would you say are the, the top two or three attributes of a really great tester? Okay. Uh, first of all, you have to be calm when you're a tester because you are in between the client and developers facing the full pressure. Uh, another thing is a um, good eye, like uh, as in when, whenever a software is in front of you, what to look at, where to look at, uh, what actually things you think are uh, functionally required for an application to be done. There are a few scenarios which you need to have like there's a Pareto rule, what we call it as 80 and 20%, wherein 80% of the scenarios are, should be functionally correct and 20% of scenarios are required. Like uh, for a banking transaction, you need the transfer to work, you need the submit or the account deposit to work. This is something you need to be good at as in divide, making the scenarios which are prior wise uh, for an application. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. It's, it's okay. not really hard to be a tester, but you need a good eye for observability. We've had another question come in from Tyrone, and he's asking, is it possible to move from QA, so I presume he means software testing there, to being a full stack developer? Yeah, that's a big jump. If you want to make that, you can surely, uh, but you need to have a good knowledge of all the coding like languages as in Java, Kotlin, or JavaScript, all these things, because full stack has, has to maintain um, the coding perspective as well as the testing perspective. Developers are also like uh, responsible for to write test cases. So yeah, it's 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 possible, but you need a big lead there. Yeah, and maybe I could help answer that, uh, Tyrone. So we have a full stack web development course. Uh, it runs for eight weeks. It's very intensive with great lecturers. We actually have um, a senior full stack web developer from MedServe. We also have a senior full stack web developer from Rent the Runway running those courses. So you can learn full stack web development at the Dublin Coding School. And then of course, we also have our automation testing course, which runs um, for seven weeks as well. So they, 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 they cross over because obviously web development works with testing so closely, but um, some of the topics uh, are, are different in both. So really, uh, you know, if you, you want, would want to decide if you really want to be a full stack web developer, you can come and do our full stack web development course. And then, you know, after that, if you're thinking, hmm, maybe I'm more into the testing side, you can do that. But please contact us for a chat about that. Um, we can have a consultation with you, phone call, talk about what you're actually looking to achieve. Um, and we, we offer those for free, those consultations. So all you'd have to do is uh, get hold of me. My email is luke at dublincoding.ie or register your interest on the website, which is dublincoding.ie. So I'll just double check to see um, I think that was the last question that's come in. So I'll just finish by saying, look, the next course in automation testing goes on the 28th of June. Um, it will be ran by Palash here. Uh, also, for, for the benefits of Tyrone, we're also having a full stack web development course launching uh, at the end of next month as well. So you can choose between those. Uh, we also do then what's called one-to-one -one, uh, tutoring. So that's an option where maybe you want to do something a bit bespoke, or if you'd like to have a lecture or just one-on-one, -on -one, we can also talk to you about creating your own course, picking which technologies you're interested in and coming up with your own program. But you need to contact us to talk about that. Uh, that's a, a, another thing we offer. So um, just I'll give you the, the, the website again. It's uh, dublincoding.ie. And on there, you can find our email, which is info at dublincoding.ie. There's also a phone number. So please get in touch if you're interested in anything I spoke about today, be it the automation testing course or the one-to-one -one option. And we'd, we'd love to speak to you about it. Okay, well, look, I'd like to thank Palash for your time today. And um, thank everyone at home for watching and hope you've had a good lunchtime. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.